and this sticks out from the body because these flies, when, they, when these flies drift in the current, they extend their legs out to the sides, reaching for a rock to grab a hold of. They don't like to be drifting in the current. And uh, when they get knocked loose from a rock, they reach out, and when they find a rock, they, they grab a hold of it and pull themselves over and get reorganized. When I'm fishing nymphs in this river, I like to fish two flies at the same time, because it gives you a chance to try out a couple of things simultaneously. But I hate droppers. Droppers are always tangling up, and they give you nothing but headaches. My friend Jim Gilson in Pennsylvania showed me a, a real slick way of rigging up two flies so that you really reduce the number of hang-ups you have. I'll just show you what I've got here. Just got a, my fluorescent butt leader tapering down to the end here. I've got my split shot about 10 inches above the stonefly nymph. And then instead of doing a dropper, all you do is put another piece of monofilament into the eye of that same fly. And about 10 inches below that, you tie your second fly on. So they're actually in a line rather than on a dropper. And they'll tangle once in a while, but nothing like the old dropper system with loops or having the one end of a blood knot left long. I think that's just a great way to fish two flies. I guess you could probably fish three flies the same way if you wanted to. So let's see if we can make it work. This is what I would consider to be the middle section of the Crow's Nest River. It's above Lundbrek Falls, and it flows through some really pretty foothill country. There are no brown trout up here. There are some browns below the falls. Here it's just rainbows and whitefish. Sometimes it's a good idea, in fact, I do it all the time, to, when you pick the fly up at the end of the cast, pick it up so that if the fish happens to have a hold of it, you'll hook them. Just pick it up like that, instead of picking it up real soft. And if there happens to be one there, you'll hook them. And there we go, across the river. And back. What's he going to do? Probably going to get away. That's what they usually do. Whoa. I'm fishing these two weighted nymphs and four split shot on a three weight rod. A lot of people think you can't do that because it just won't handle it. But when you're sh casting short, the line weight, I think, is pretty irrelevant. And I actually think I can land nice fish like this a little easier on a light line rod because it absorbs the shock so well. This is a nice rainbow, 16, 17 inches. Took a little black Rich Creek stonefly. I should get the tape measure on that guy. No, I'm not gonna do that. They're always smaller when you do that. Nice pink stripe. Just the kind of fish they catch in fishing videos. That's a perfect fish. And there he goes. I like that. I could get used to this. There's a fish. Not a big fish, but it is a fish with fins and scales and all the requirements. Whoops. Uh -huh. See, I gotta work on my, uh... oh good. Here, I'm standing through my line. I've got it wrapped around a bush. There's a fish there that's now wrapped around a stump. You don't usually see this stuff in fishing videos. There. Nothing like doing it with style. There you go. Now, we organize in about 20 minutes. There. Oops, now I got the log. There. Nothing to this. There's a fish. Oh, it feels like he may be kind of substantial. Ooh, gee, he ran right by my foot. Well, this fish really feels like he's got some shoulders. I'm going to have to go after him here. 
He's really, really strong. I suspect he's probably maybe the fish we were hoping we could catch here. He was laying right up at the head of that pool, uh, probably because they're feeding actively and just glomming everything that came by. Just ran the little nymph through the top of the pool, and he was waiting there for it. I hope we can get a hold of this guy. It really, really would be worth getting a close look at. I'm going to move down with him here rather than try and pull him up through that heavy water. If you try and do that, it just it won't work with a big fish like this. Oh, boy, he is a good one. Gee, I hope I can get this guy in. If he gets around the corner on me, we're going to have big problems because the water's really, really fast down there. I'm going to have to stick with him and try and just wear him down. I should have a chance of landing a fish in. I've had him on this long, and that's a good sign. I've got 3X tippet on there, which should hold just fine unless I do something stupid. Of course, there's always that chance. But I'm gonna really try and, try and be careful with this one and get a, get a hold of him if I can. It's very easy to become impatient right at the end of the fight here and try and rush the fish the last few feet into your net. But boy, if the fish isn't ready, you shouldn't be ready either. And just try and be patient, and when he's, when he's tired, you can skid him over like there. That is a good fish. I don't know if I've ever caught one that big in this river. I guess maybe maybe one other time I caught a fish about this size in the crow's nest. You kind of expect some fish that size in the bow, but we don't get many on this river this size. At least I don't. We expect to catch some 16 and 18 inches. Um, this fish looks like he'd probably go 22 or 23 inches. Uh, I'm not going to measure him because he's tired, but boy, I'll tell you, that is a pretty special fish. Won't make them any better than this one. This is the North Raven River in West Central Alberta. It's one of our few true spring creeks. And this is a stream that has a real high population of brown trout and some really nice ones. As you can see, there's lots of cover, lots of undercut banks and fallen. Uh, some fallen trees and there's a lot of willow bushes along the banks. It's considered a very difficult stream to fish because, as with most spring creeks, it's very clear and it's very slow moving, very much flat water as you can see. The fish will work the surface quite well. There's a lot of small insect hatches and it is also set up in such a way that you can't really get across from a fish very often. It's very common that you have to fish almost straight upstream to the fish. If I was up here trying to fish down there, those fish would see us. So it's a very difficult stream. Um, I really am fascinated with the place because there is so much going on under there, and yet it can be so hard to figure out at times. It's the kind of stream that'll drive you crazy, and a lot of people don't like it. Um, but I think if, you, if you're from the east, you're used to fishing eastern spring creeks, or perhaps the best known spring creeks in the west, in Montana and Idaho and Wyoming, you'd probably really enjoy the North Raven. This is very intense sort of fishing in this stream. You're, you're concentrating all the time. You're moving slowly. You're watching always. It's not a sort of an easy, relaxing type of fishing, but it's I certainly enjoy it. It's technical fishing, I guess. You can't get beside the fish very often because of the high banks and the vegetation, so you're forced to fish straight up to a fish. And you usually either hook them or spook them in the first couple of casts. I'm sure we can. Uh, probably do the ladder here. There he is. That's a decent brown trout. He's gone. 